Hello folks, uh, welcome back to the HS Tech Channel. In this video, we are going to look at the GE Master 3 repeater. Here you go. A really common repeater used in both amateur and commercial service. And in this case, we're using it for amateur service. We're going to look at that. I got two radios here we can use. We got a FTM 400 and a good old Balfang. I've got the transmit antenna ready to roll on the, on the dummy load the receive antenna uh, also on a well it's not an actual antenna and we're going to power it up get a nice beep tells us we're ready to go and we're powered up and running so from right to or I guess we'll start left to right right to left over here is the power module uh, flip the reset switch and it resets the repeater uh, right here we have the receive synthesizer. Sorry, this is the transmit synthesizer. This is the receive synthesizer. And this contains a local oscillator as well as a frequency reference output. The reference output goes into the transmit synthesizer. And then the transmit synthesizer is informed by the system module what its operating frequency should be. The receive synthesizer also outputs a local oscillator. The local oscillator goes into the receive front end, which accepts the receive. RF, which obviously would be going through your duplexer, and then the IF output goes straight into the receive IF stage. So uh, that's not so bad. We got a manual switch we can flip here to trigger the PTT, which we don't necessarily want, but we can if we need to. We can block out transmitting, and we can also, this is like the squelch off control. There's a volume dial here for that, as well as a squelch control itself and then a PA alarm. Now, I don't have the PA connected to this. The modulator produces 10 milliwatts to excite the PA. And then, so instead, I just have a breadboard on the back with a bunch of resistors on it to simulate the action of the PA. Here's the data port. You can plug it up and program it. And then here's our microphone port, which we're not going to use. So let's go ahead and get this going. We turn this on and we turn up our audio. Uh, you'll be able to hear it. Test, test, this is a test. There you go. It's got a decent hang time, but, you know, it's good enough. And when you reset it, we'll actually get an ID. So, let's get that. Those of you that know your Master 3s will know that really clicky CW is hallmark of the Master 3. So, okay. Well, we know it works, but... We want to dig a little deeper. Let's turn it off. And all of these are on these jumper things that we can just pull off like handles. And I think I have most of these ready to disconnect, except for this. We'll take a look at some of these modules here. Although they're a little bit stiff to take out, but... Oh well, I guess it is what it is. And these are not but uh, probably two inches long, about an inch high. Okay, transmit synthesizer. Not much to this, but this is what they look like. They come out like this. Inside here is a ton of dip switches. And you need to change these dip switches when you want to get yours on the ham band. And by ham band, I mean two meters. Uh, this is a VHF machine, and this is actually a VHF Group 1 machine. So it just it just works on two meters as is, uh, with a little bit of modification. We'll look at that in a moment. But the transmitter module will generate whatever you throw at it. Um, well, as long as it's within the group rating, and so I know it's a group one. If you can see that, hopefully you can. So pretty simple. All right, the receive synthesizer. Also, pretty plain and boring, but it's got some good stuff in it, too. Uh, also, they have all these backings and shieldings. This is truly a quality product. Um, as much as I like Yesu, I think Yesu's radios are kind of junky. Um, they're nowhere near as good as this, and their DR1X repeater is trash compared to this. This thing is literally indestructible. So if you're in a market for a repeater, just buy one of these. And this is a testament to that, because this right here is not going anywhere. But right in here is the adjustment for VCO, and you can 
control the VCO's gain, and the actual frequency for the VCO is synthesized by the control module. Okay, uh, receive front end. This is a little tricky to get out. This has something really nice and interesting on it. Uh, right in here is the actual logic for it, and if you open it up, you'll see something that looks like a textbook definition of a double balanced mixer. And you can see a transformer on one side, diode ring, transform on the other side, it's great. But this right here is actually a cavity filter. And when you adjust, I'm not gonna adjust them, but if you adjust these slugs, you'll get whatever tuning frequency you want. Now, in this case, these have been lengthened a little bit in order to get them on the two meter ham band. But if you didn't do that, then it's just, it's good to go on the business band. Uh, so if you're watching this and you're a business radio person, you need to adjust these. And these right here are currently set for 144.73 megahertz, but there's a guide and a manual on how to do it, and you can find all the manuals on the repeater builder site, because uh, someone in there graciously archived them all. Oh, if you need a repeater software, just let me know. I've got it. And then you receive IO stage. Pretty boring box. Uh, these are all the same. There's like group one, group two, group whatever. Um, Group 1 is VHF low, Group 2 is VHF high, Group 3 I think is like 220 and maybe, no. I know Group 4 I think it's UHF. Um, either way, the receive is basically all the same, the receive IF stage is the same. This right here accepts a 21.4 megahertz IF, and if you're having trouble and you don't know if your receive IF module is dead, go get an HF radio, like an HF ham radio. Go to 21.4 MHz FM, apply your tone, and key up to a dummy load, and then attach a wire here and wrap the wire around the dummy load, and you'll see if your receive module is actually working or not. <laughs> I know it's just makeshift, but it does work, and it is really simple. And in the system module, um, we may actually open this just for fun. Uh, you know what, let me go get, let me go, let's open it up. It would be an HS Tech Channel video if I didn't plan anything out ahead of time. All right, let's get this unscrewed really quickly here. In the meantime, I'll talk about anything else you may need to know. So while I unscrew this, you'll have to listen to me yammer on. So these are really common, uh, at least at the moment, they are relatively common in the used market. However, a lot of shops are throwing them out. Now you can get ones that are advanced digital capable, uh, translation P25. And you'll know it's a P25 one. I have a P25 one sitting under my bed, but there's another port down here for a DSP. And you can ex ex pretty much guess what that DSP is. It's going to have the Ambi vocoder on it, and it's not, it's not so bad. But you can also, as a ham, you can get an MMDVM. Although I suppose there's nothing stopping you from modifying an MMDVM to work in the commercial world. Uh, I'm going to warn you against doing that. <laughs> The MMDVM is a silly amateur project, so you may want to be a little bit mindful in that. It's not exactly the most reliable thing out there, but the MMDVM will give you D-Star, DMR, Fusion, P25, NXDN, M17, even AX25, all in one box. And these card edge connectors provide a universal analog interface, and it's flat audio too, it's not um, filtered audio. All the filtering is done in the transmitting stage. So do be mindful, you can use that connector here. Just plug some wires in the back of it. If you're wondering what it looks like. It's kind of like a Macintosh new bus connector from before my time. Just get a bunch of wires, plug them in. The pinout is easy to find in the manual. And then you're off to the races with your MMDVM and then just wire up the key line, and it's it's really not that hard. If you've done any electronics project, you can figure it out. And you can also possibly use a different PA. Um, the default PA that comes with it is 110 watts, at least on VHF. This transmit synthesizer produces 10 milliwatts. Yeah, that's all, 10 milliwatts. Not very strong, so. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so here we go. Here's the control module, and it's pretty much what you'd expect. This is actually a model of 1992, 
which is actually kind of new, but it's basically just your standard old like 8051 looking system. It's two boards, but so is everything. And there's a EEPROM in here as well that holds the settings. And the clock crystal is in there as well. However, my board is like crooked for some reason. Anyway, this box is a really good RF shielding job. And you can see it has all these notches on it. For all of that, it's some good stuff. So I will quickly reattach this and mention some more things about this particular line. So, in addition to being able to do P25, these can do narrow or wideband. And the setting of the programming software is the TX pot, the transmit potentiometer. It likes to call all of the settings options potentiometers for some reason. And the transmit potentiometer controls the, like I said, it controls the transmitter's deviation. 162 is good for wideband FM, or what we call like 25 kilohertz. If you need 12.5, um, half it. So that, that will do, and you'll be on the air with that. These are all Part 90 certified as is. So land mobile radio, you're good to go. And amateur radio, it doesn't really matter. You don't really have to have anything certified in amateur radio. So yeah, just use it as is and just get it programmed and tune your slugs and you're good to go. I'm going to warn you against the power modules. The pinout of this is like a Molex connector. Do not hook it up to a Molex power supply. You'll blow it out, all right? The pin all the way over here, the, I guess, rightmost pin or leftmost pin if you're looking into socket is ground. And then the pin all the way on the other side is voltage, and it's 12 volts, which is why I'm using this cheap little switching power supply because it gets the job done and it works. And uh, we're good to go. There's the beep of success. And oh, I should probably like plug this stuff in. <laughs> it's not a really, it's not a difficult repeater to work on. Uh, it's not nearly as turnkey as like a Motorola MTR2000, or I'm sorry, MTR200 or anything like that. But for the price you pay, which in my case is free, thanks again, Barry, for uh, giving me this. It's not that bad. Reset. There we go. Test, test. I, I ID'd in the past 10 minutes, so don't worry. Um, the repeater does this IDing anyways, but I've ID'd within 10 minutes on the frequency. Um, yeah, so there we go. That's the GE Master 3. Really simple really effective and it's relatively quality product. Backplane's in there. Right up here is options for more expansions if you want to design stuff. The cartridge connector up top is what you want and the PA sits on the back. Uh, again, I don't actually have a PA hooked up to it, but if you do decide to use a custom PA, you need to have a lot of gain. It's so like I said, 50 dB of gain. So you may need to run an amplifier into an amplifier. <laughs> but, oh well, I guess it, uh, it's not the harsh thing in the world, so... Anyway, I'll make a, another video on a dual receive module set uh, for a voting receiver system as well. Uh, I'll show you how to do that. Uh, although it's more of like a link system. Uh, <laughs> the only problem is that it's an on, like an on-band one link system, but eventually this machine will be on the air, uh, at least in the service vicinity of where I'm at. And uh, it'll be a voting machine as well, so... Anyway, with that, I will sign off, and y'all have a good one.